Personal notice. Dangerous my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The House That Jack Built, another adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, my name is Lacey Jack. Yeah, Jack is the surname. I always have to explain that. As a boy, I never appreciated that handle, Lacey, in the front, but I got over it. We change, don't we, as time goes by, to a lot of things different. Mr. Valentine, for the first time in my life, I'm going to be really different and ask for help. I need you tonight. If you'll meet me at the club casino at 11 o'clock, you and Miss Brooks, I'll explain to you what... A uh, man likes to just sit and look, Brooksy. What's the matter? Take you half an hour to size people up? No. We don't even really know who you are. No, I know you don't. <laughs> Mother died when I was seven or eight. She was a mess, but can you imagine anybody, even on five cents a bucket beer, hanging a name like Lacey oh, on a board? Friend, it's a nice nightclub, but let's get Hold down Hold it, will you? Excuse me, this is it here. What? A girl, a singer. What about it, Mr. Jack? What do you think? I was alone. Nice looking. I should have you don't mind a few extra circles under the eyes? Needs fattening up is all. Oh, brother, I give up. Come on, Brooksy, let's drink the champagne. What do you think about the way she sings? You want my opinion? You've been around a lot. She's a little inexperienced, I guess. Oh, but brother, that does it. Did you get us all the way here just to get an opinion on some little blonde you've got your eye on? I want to know, Mr. Valentine. I must know. All right, so I'll tell you. In a word, she'd be a great dressmaker's dummy. Fall for her, I don't care. Only when it comes to a singing, excuse me, but I'm afraid I don't get it. In fact, why a fancy place like this would even hire somebody oh, who can't... Oh, George, she's not as bad as that. Well, just asking... I can't carry a tune in a bucket myself. I guess you're right. That's not the important part. Her name is Lila. She's my sister. So Daddy has friends. Imagine Daddy with friends. <laughs> Has he drunk his champagne like a real nice friend, Miss Brooks? Lila always kids a lot. You mustn't mind Oh, her. shut up. How'd you like my applause? All people with one arm. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hey, Lila, how's it, baby? It was great, kid. You got a great talent. You got a great... Hello, Joe. Oh. Hello, oh, Lacey. I see you. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ha-ha. <laughs> Daddy's got friends, all right. <laughs> Isn't my brother the most impressive, important man... Take it easy, Lila. Mr. Valentine, ...that you I'll... ever met for the first time in your life? Hey, where have I seen that guy Joe before? That's not important. Oh, not like Daddy. So drink your champagne, stranger, and do not Wait ask Wait up, bring any... me the bill, William. Mr. Jack, I said... You don't have I... to be a friend, Valentine. You've got a job tonight. I'm hiring you. Now we start, and that's good enough. Uh, yes, sir. You, you, you oh, here. It. Take it out of this. Oh, no, Mr. Jack. Compliments to the house. I'm sure the owner wouldn't want me to give you a bill. Go just... on, go on. I don't want anything free. Now take it. Oh, oh no, indeed. No, sir. Really. Compliments to the house. George, no wonder I keep my job. Well, you coming, Valentine, Miss Brooks? Yes. Yes, we're coming. Don't wave that money at me yet. But at least you've hired my curiosity. We're all going home to our place. Mr. Valentine and Miss Brooks are going to stay with you tonight, Lila, so come on. What? Why? What are you going to do? Now, please, Lila, do what I say. Just tonight. I'm sorry. I'm coming. 
Whatever you say, Lacey. And, and this is the house that Jack built. <laughs> it's a nice looking apartment. Hiya, Lacey. Hello, kid. You see a good movie? This is the rest of the family, the brother. Miss Brooks and this is Mr. Valentine. Hello. I'm very pleased to meet you. Hiya. His name is Mickey, and he's the best halfback in town. Ha, <laughs> ha. Second string, he means. Gosh, he's the one who could have played ball. Huh? He's twice as fast as I am at everything, and he's still in better condition than most of them. <laughs> I got him fooled, you see. Come on, Valentine, in here. And there's no fool like an old... Oh, shut friend. up. What's your trouble tonight? Keep them apart, Miss Brooks. They're all right. Just kids is all in here. So, uh, you're the daddy around here, huh? The house that Jack built. Skip it. I'm sorry I've stalled so long. I just wanted you to meet them. I'm going out now. I'll be back in an hour. Hey, wait a minute. Hold it, hold it. My job isn't babysitting. There's a gun in the desk drawer if you need it. What? Job really starts when I get back. Lila is worried about me, that's all. I'm running across town to see a man in a boarding house on Commercial Street. Hey, wait a minute, Buster. I said I don't... Credentials. There they are. I'm a writer, Mr. Valentine. I write about crime. Oh. I'm ready to blow the lid off this town. Oh, wow. Special deputy, DA's office. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a big shot or two the police can't get because they don't have facts. The man I'm going to see has them. We'll go over that when I come back. That man in the nightclub, the one named Joe who knew you, works for one of those big shots... Yeah, that's where I've seen him before, in police lineups. He works for Duke Averson, right? Well, he's not the one I'm seeing. Joe, I mean. There's nothing on Averson, is there? Maybe we'll get something. Who knows? Only now I've got to get my car out of the garage before the night Mr. Leaves. Jack, I'm not going to... It's a dangerous game I play, Mr. Valentine. I told you I need your help. There's too many wrong people loose. Sure, I know people... And they know me. So I don't want anything to happen to the kids in there. Do you? No. No, that's the idea. Now, you can get the gun out of the desk later on, I guess. And you don't have to worry about me any because I carry another one myself. Right here, you see? Yeah, I noticed. You... You play it straight, and I will. Always have, all my life. Be back in an hour. What a pile of stuff that was. Lila, where's your telephone? Hmm? Oh, oh, it's there on the coffee table. Has a long cord. Oh, yeah, thanks. Won't I do instead? Oh, you do fine. Keep it up, I like it. Oh, I got a great talent, George. George, what's the matter? Everything. Now, Brooksy, get over there and talk to the boy. Keep him busy. Well, who are you going to call? Lieutenant Riley. Go on, call him. I'm sure, George. Well, you play that pretty well, Lila. Better than you sing. Well, I like you, too. <laughs> Friendly, that's me. Say, why do they keep you at that club? What's it got to do with your brother, Lacey? He got me started. I earn 200 a week. Should I complain? That's not what I meant. Who is your brother that they're so anxious to please? Won't even take his money, but won't talk to either. Makes them all look nervous. You've never heard of him, Mr. Valentine. Nobody has. He's nobody. Hey, listen to this. Has he ever done any writing in his life? What? Ever worked at the <laughs> DA's office, special deputy? <laughs> oh, you jerk. No, not a sucker either. I'm sorry. What are you doing? Who is your brother, really, Lila? Why don't you like him? Why are other people afraid of him? Oh, hello. This is George Valentine. Give me Lieutenant Riley. Huh? Yeah, sure, I'll wait. Well, it won't do you any good, Mr. Valentine. They don't know anything. Nobody does. And nobody ever tells anybody... I'll get it, sis. Hey, Uncle Mark. Hello there, halfback. Your sister home and Lacey? Thought you might like to come upstairs, join a little party. Lieutenant Riley no speaking argument, to you, Bama's no time. We what? keep you in training on ginger George, why did you hang up on Lieutenant Riley? What about it, Lila? Thought you might like to have a little fun at it. Well, hello. Hello. Come in. Your face is familiar, young man. 
So is yours. I don't recall a name. I only stopped by to ask the three jacks upstairs for... Well, I recall yours. So, uh, you live in the same building, Uncle Mar. Well, not really his uncle. Short for Marmaduke. Hideous, isn't it? Old friend, that's all. Short for Duke. Duke Averson. Well, I'm really impressed, Mr. Averson. This is the real big time. And I guess you're the biggest crooked wheel of them all, aren't you? Still rolling, at least. Don't be rude, young man. Well, Lacey isn't here. He went out a second ago to see a man in a rooming house. Oh, is that so? I didn't know. Yeah. I'll bet you did know. You're not surprised. Oh, for heaven's sakes. I'm giving a party, young man. That's all I care about. And Lila, my dear, whenever you send these people home, come on up. Join us. Or bring them along. I don't care. George, what on earth is going on? Haven't you figured it, Angel? We're on top of a powder keg. And there is the dog that chases the cat, that worries the rat, that lives in the house... Lila, does your brother work for Averson? Who's the rat in that poem? Lacey? Is he really one of Duke's thugs? Mister, my brother's all right. He's straight. Take it easy, Mickey. And so is Duke. You just don't know him. He's a nice guy. Oh, sure. So nice that people who cross him end up dead. Only the police can ever prove it. You move in a great circle. Lacey's no rat. He's straight. You can't say that about... Uncle Mar of all the... Leave him alone. He doesn't know anything. Do you? Why did Lacey get you in the first place? Where did We're going to find on? that out when Riley gets here. What? Hey, let go. And don't argue. He wants the two of you protected. Maybe he was telling that much of the truth. Here, Brooksy, the gun's for you. Now, Riley's probably in a lather because I hung up on him. So get him back. Get him over here. You won't have any more trouble. Oh, George, where are you going? To blow the lid off this town. The house that Jack built, it's made out of straw. It's falling down. I don't know why. But I will if I can get down to Commercial Street in time to stop a murder. <laughs> Turn to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. When your car acts as if it had taken a sleeping pill instead of giving all the pep and power it was designed to give, it may be the fault of gummy gasoline. That's because most raw gasolines contain impurities that form power-robbing gum. And the only way those impurities can be got rid of is by refining. That's where Chevron Supreme gasoline comes to the rescue. It's super refined to prevent engine sticking gum. Remember that next time you buy gasoline. It is carefully balanced to give your car superior performance under every driving condition and wherever you motor in the West. Properly balanced Chevron Supreme gives you plus, plus mileage, too. Why not try it tomorrow? Ask for it where you can depend on careful battery inspection. That's at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. And now back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. The house that Jack built. Lacey Jack, a strange man that you've never heard of before, but that other people seem to be afraid of. A man who apparently works for Duke Averson, whom the police have been trying to get for years. But why would such a man hire you? If your name is George Valentine, you know this is one case where you'll probably never have all the answers. But you also know that tonight there is a chance to blow the lid off this town, as Lacey himself put it a few minutes ago before he left. And as you hurry downstairs to your own car, you know that if two and two make four, your first job is to stop a murder. Hey, you! Hey! Oh, it's my friend of there. Lacey, I thought you'd be halfway across town by now. Right, man was off duty. I had to find my car in the garage myself. I thought I told you to stay with the kids. Take it easy, take it easy. A police lieutenant, I know, will be there any second. Nothing's going to happen to him. Policeman? <laughs> oh, I know, I know. He won't find out any more than I have. Hey, you got your family well trained. When I talk about you, they keep their mouth shut. There's nothing on anybody, Valentine. Oh, sure, I know. Particularly on you. You're the member of Averson's gang nobody's ever heard about. 
You're not uh, popular like the others. All right, all right. But a few people who know seem to want to do you favors. You smile, and even a thug like Joe gets nervous. You say you got to work tonight, and your sister gets nervous. All right. So I hired you under false pretenses. Sure, and you're late for an appointment, aren't you? A little guy in a rooming house on Commercial Street. Mr. Valentine, Who knows something about the big shots, about Averson, maybe. You could never even have... For several years, the enemies of Duke Averson, the guys who know things, who might be squealers, have had a habit of dying. Only nobody ever gets caught. There's never any evidence. Now, don't try to I'm just saying I figured you out, Lacey. No wonder you don't have any friends. It's high price, specialized work, isn't it? But it must be lonesome work, too. Like being a hangman. Only all out by yourself, way on the other side of the black fence, like being a private executioner. Now you think I'm a killer, is that it, Mr. Valentine? <laughs> oh, you should learn to move faster. How do you think I stayed alive in the business so long? Hang your head down between your legs a minute. You'll feel better. Come on, brother. You know all the tricks, don't you? Lightning Lacey, Billy the Kid. Fast on the draw, fast on the rabbit punch. Advice, that's all. How many men have you killed, Lacey, huh? Must be quite a life. St. Peter will say to you, what did you do, my friend? And then you'll say... Never mind. Just keep your hand off that car door. Oh, I know, I know. You're the expert, all right. Lila is a mess on account of what you are. But Mickey, just because you're not the usual type rat, says you're straight, thinks you're a big hero. Oh. Well, lost your temper, huh? That's a big weakness in a guy like you. I'm not mad. You just talk too much. 3157 Commercial Street, huh? Yeah. Yeah, this is it. It'll be easier if you come with me. And don't get any ideas. It's well prepared. Three other boarders. They all work night shift. Landlady's gone. Great. What's this guy's name? I don't know. Whitey something. Comes from Detroit. You don't even know his name. He's been pointed out. The young kid down on his luck. Just a kid. Only Averson says get him and you go to work while the rest of the boys have a party for an alibi. What's this whitey got on the big boy, anyway? You waste your time asking me things. I'm here. Oh, sure, sure, I know. You don't squeal. You're straight. Nice, honest, loyal guy. Well, how do you know for sure this whitey's a squealer? Just a new kid from Detroit, and he knows something or saw something? Well, how does that prove that he's the guy... Yeah? Yeah? Who is it? Get back in there. Why do you... Hey, oh. It's all right, both of you. Nobody's hurt. Faster every time, aren't you? <laughs> what is this? I saw the two of you coming up outside. What's going on? I'm from Averson. Here, take this. Huh? What do you mean? It's a thousand bucks, and I'm a sucker. There's a plane leaves for Canada, 4 a.m., direct connection. Be on it. Oh. Wait a minute. I don't want to go to Canada. I'm not... Be on it, I said. And when you get there, whatever it is you know, forget it. You understand me? Just shut up and disappear. Yeah. All right. Whatever you say. I'll go. Hmm. Well, Valentine, you see how wrong you can be? So you didn't. So you are playing a dangerous game tonight, so you're going soft. There's the apartment, Ross. Soft in the head. Sure, the house that Jack built. You get orders to kill and you don't. That makes a big, noble guy out of you. Lights are on in the apartment, so the kids are all right. We'll take the back elevator. Oh, yeah, sure. The penthouse express, where the big guy lives and gives parties. I've always played it that way. 
Duke and I were kids together. Oh, you were kids together, huh? Oh, I wouldn't expect you to do any squealing. That's the code, isn't it? For a loyal man whose only vice is he kills people, who even his own friends are afraid of like a rattlesnake. Stay off. What happened? Saw it yourself, Duke. This guy's been on my tail all evening. Yes, yes, at Valentine. How on earth he... Did picked he... me up in the nightclub. He's been glued tight ever since. But what did you do well, about... Well, I couldn't rub off that whitey kid from Detroit for you, could I? With him hanging around, you saw that yourself. But Lacey, look here, that whitey... I gave whitey a thousand bucks and a ticket for Canada. You what? Valentine didn't even tumble. He stayed in the car. So now I can shake him. I bought myself a ticket for the same plane. Hmm. Oh, it's pretty good. So it happens in Canada instead of Commercial Street. Yes, yes, good work, Lacey. Whitey's a squealer. We can't afford to let him live. I guess I'll be going then. No, no, you've got time. Stick around. It's a good party. Old times, say. Girls, bring my pal Lacey a drink. What are you doing with that phone? I just want Lieutenant Riley up here. Can't even come in without a warrant. There's nothing to search for or find either. This is the big time, detective. Now look, Lacey, I've stuck around because you're going to give Averson to Riley on a silver platter. You're going to squeal. Come on, hurry it up, officer. I am what, you dumb stupid? Easy now. Maybe that's how you can make some of it up. You and your code. You owe it to me, if nothing else, because I saved your life. You... What did you say? Yeah, that's right. You think you hired me so you'd have an excuse for not killing Whitey, an excuse to run away. Well, if I hadn't been with you tonight, it's you who'd be dead by now. Oh, you're crazy. Now cut it out. We'll get the truth out of Whitey. And I don't mean he's a squealer either. Oh, Valentine. (laughs) Oh, that's right. Get mad now. Show me the muscles in your head. You know what I'm saying is true. There wasn't a soul in that rooming house. It was a perfect setup both ways. Both ways? And did you see how surprised the Duke looked when you walked in? Yeah, he expected Whitey, not you. I don't believe it. That's not true. I died for Whitey to knock him down. I bumped his chest. He was packing a gun. You think I've gone soft? Afraid to kill, huh? Well, well I'll show you... Why don't you face it, Lacey? Who's more dangerous to Duke Averson than a guy who's gone soft like you have? Uh, oh, no. No, you're not going to pull that trigger. You know it's true yourself. You're a has-been now, and anybody around you could see it. That Whitey you were supposed to kill, he's Averson's new executioner... Tonight, if I hadn't been there, you'd have walked straight into it. Oh, oh, go on. I know what side of the fence I'm on. For me, it's simple now. I just had... The elevator. Yeah, that's right. My friend Riley, maybe. The telephone's still off the hook, see? You dirty... Whitey. So long, Lacey. Have a nice sleep. Right, Valentine. So Whitey came up to report to get me, but he he couldn't have done it in the first place. Not fast enough, did you see? Don't brag yet, Lacey. You're half as dead as he is. Duke and me, kids together. Why did he hire that guy? Why did you kill people? My brother Mickey thinks, thinks I'm straight. He doesn't know much, but he'd never get over it if he thought I was... Squealer. You mean you'd lose your last friend? Yeah. I saw what Lila thinks of you. You'd be all alone then, wouldn't you? You're scared. I'll talk. I'm a squealer. I want Mickey to know that, Valentine. I'll tell you about Averson. We'll blow the lid off this town. Believe me, he's it. All right, put your hands up. That's it. Valentine, you stand over there. And you drop that gun, Mr. Averson. Well, of course. Of course. Hello, Lieutenant. I just heard the shooting. I came out here to find out what... I know, I know. I heard it from the front elevator. Welcome to the party, Riley. But get a secretary quick. It's not going to last long. Hey, come on, Lacey. Come on. Wake up. Snap out of it. He's dying. Can't you see it? What can he say? Lacey and I are old friends, that's all. Huh. And if you try to go to court... Oh, shut up, Averson. You're right. Nothing I can say now... Do any good against him? It's never any proof. Oh, Valentine, besides, I, I'm straight, see. You can't get him. I, I'm too washed up even to squeal. Only, 
Oh, Keep Leo. away from that gun. Get out of the way, you suckers. Look out, stab him. Lacey, don't do it. All right, killer. You got him all right. You blew the lid off the town, all right. You killed the Duke. Only now, drop that... Uh-oh. Yeah, Riley, you're wasting your breath, all right. The killer's always too fast for us. He's dead. He... He was a heel, wasn't he? That's right, Mickey. He was a rat like all the rest of them. In a pinch, he'd turn on anybody. He was no more straight than a... Oh, stop that blubbering. You always knew what he was like. Why don't you admit it? You hated him yourself. You just don't know it Take yet. It easy, well, grow up like I have. Talking football. Gee, ain't he fast. My wonderful brother I'm so loyal to. Sure. That's the trick. Say, this is the dog that chased the cat, that worried the rat, that... Come on, Mickey. We gotta buy some flowers for the funeral. Yeah, Lila. Oh, George, they're so lost. I know it, Booksy. So is Lacey. But maybe they won't be now. But Lacey wasn't really a squealer. Should I tell Mickey that? When Lacey himself practically told me how he wanted it, said he'd lose his last friend in Mickey if the kid thought he went against the code, against loyalty. Yeah, the kid'll be all right now. Lacey really wanted to disillusion Mickey, well. He couldn't have been such a bad person. Certainly the way he died... Brooksy, proved... he was a heel. He lived that way, he died that way. Let's just say he could see better than anybody else what a mess of a place it really was. How it had to be torn down. That house that Jack built. <laughs> Did you know that today's automobiles need 40% more battery power than the cars of 10 years ago? That's because of the added electrical equipment. On most cars a decade ago, the battery took care of the starter and the lights, and that was all. Now the battery has to furnish power for the radio, heater, and other accessories, as well as for the starter and all the extra lights. To avoid trouble, have your car's battery checked regularly at a standard station or independent Chevron gas station. Here they do a speedy job, right at the pump block. Make sure that battery water is at the proper level, the terminal clamps are clean and tight, and that your battery has a high enough charge. And don't forget, frosty weather will be here all too soon. That's another good reason for having your battery inspected tomorrow. While you're there, get a tank full of Chevron Supreme, the gasoline that's super refined to give your car smoother and more powerful performance than ever before. Make it a date tomorrow at your independent Chevron gas station or your standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer is Lieutenant Riley. Larry Dobkin was heard as Jack. Vivi Janis as Leela. Eddie Firestone as Mickey. Ken Christie as Duke. Dan O'Herlihy as Whitey. And Dick Ryan as the captain. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>